Hi everyone, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. Over the last week I've spent nearly 100 hours on an Aurora Borealis shader. It's been challenging and tiring, but I think it's good enough to release to all of you now. So this is the quick tutorial video to show you how to use it. Let's dive right in. On Weathermaker Prefab Full Screen Effects Clouds, we have the Aurora Profile and an Animation Duration. These are pretty simple, so let's go ahead and look at the sky. By the way, the aurora only shows up at night. If you try to show it at daytime, it doesn't show up. So let's go ahead and look at our profile. We've set to none, which means show nothing. I'm going to switch it to the default profile. And over the course of 10 seconds, an aurora borealis will animate right in. I'm going to go ahead and turn this canvas off. There we go. Okay, so now we have an Aurora Borealis in our screen. It's just basically some nice vertical noise, lights, pillars. Uh, it's not 100% physically accurate, but I think it's good enough and it renders pretty fast. So I've decided to go with what I got here. Let's take a look at the Aurora profile and we'll show you what all these parameters do. Sample count is the ray march through the noise field, and the subsample count is for every point ray marked how many octaves of noise to compute. Uh, as you lower this, the aurora becomes less detailed. And as you raise it, it becomes more detailed. The animation speed scrolls and wobbles the aurora, so let's set this to 1. You'll notice it's moving now. You can move it that way as well. Or you can animate the aurora in place, which kind of just does a little bit of a wobble. It's not actually scrolling, it's just kind of randomizing in place. The march scale controls how the ray march moves through the noise field, so as you raise this, the aurora will become more stretched or more detailed. That's probably a little too much. Probably what you want to do is raise one and not the other, that way you get some nice long stretching. Again, you may notice some banding and unusual distortions if you go too high on those. But with different parameters, you can get quite the nice, long, stretchy auroras. Okay, and then of course the Y value also just controls how it marches through the noise field. You can see the aurora is turning mostly green, and you'll see why that's happening in a second. But first, let's look at shape scale and detail scale. So the shape is the overall shape of the aurora, so as you lower this, aurora will become more zoomed out. Let's see if I can get it really small. So now we've got kind of tiny patch marks of noise. As you raise that value all the way to the top, the aurora becomes really uh, distorted and spread out, but you also notice some artifacts and banding, so you probably don't want to go that high. So I'm going to leave that at the 1.4 default. Okay, the detail scale doesn't really control the warping so much as the kind of inner individual shape. So you can see as I raise that, the aurora more or less stays the same shape. It just becomes more detailed within that shape. And again, as these values get high, you've got some banding going on, so watch out for that. But I think the defaults are probably pretty good, so unless you have a specific effect you want to achieve, you can just leave those as is. Let's take a look at the gradient. So the gradient on the left here is the aurora at height 0, and then all the way on the right is height 1. So let's go ahead and pick some of these gradients and you can see what they do. So if you just wanted kind of a blue aurora, you'll notice that we get this error at the bottom that says color gradient must have four keys and four alpha keys. So this one does not, obviously, so it's not going to work so it expects there to be four of each key and that's what this one does so let's just go ahead and slide these around and I can show you what they do so as I move this away the aurora is going to become more blue and if I put those back and slide this way it becomes more green and then of course we can change this color if we want it to be more yellow and so let's explain what these control points mean. So basically right here in the center of this gradient, that's the aurora at height 50%, so somewhere right about here. So as the aurora gets higher, you can have the colors change. 
I've looked at a lot of pictures and videos of auroras and they all seem to have multiple colors and as it gets higher it changes to new colors so I added this gradient here to be able to let you control that. Alright so just to sum up the gradient needs four control points for alpha and four for color. Alright let's move on. Aurora intensity is pretty simple just controls how intense the aurora is. The power controls the intensity as it fades out so as you ratchet that power up only areas of immense intensity will continue to show and anything else will get zoomed out. So a power much higher than 16 is probably not going to show anything so keep that a little bit lower. The height fade power controls how the aurora fades at the top of the aurora so let's show you how that works. As you raise this the aurora fades out less at the top and then as you lower that the aurora fades down more from the top so you can see it kind of coming down so if you don't want the aurora to fade just slide that all the way up and now this aurora is not really fading at all and for for your look this might be what you want but i, I like the default so we're going to put all these back to their defaults okay the height is the similar to the volumetric clouds. It's a min-max value of the aurora noise field. So as you lower the min value, the aurora will come down. Let's just change this to 500. You'll see that it's right on top of us, which doesn't really look that great. So let's put that back. But let's try raising this up to, say, 30,000. Now we're stretching the aurora more. But again, as you make this too large, you might see some banding. So. I've tried to pick a pretty sensible range, 10 to 20,000 world space units, and it looks pretty good. So you may just leave it at that. All right, the distance fade controls how the aurora fades if it's far away. So at the horizon, you'll see the aurora is not going below the horizon, but as I lower that, now you see it below the horizon. So you feel free to tweak that if you want your auroras to go below the horizon. All right, dithering. If you do see banding, you can raise dithering. Obviously, you don't want to go too high on that because it looks bad. But feel free to raise that if you see banding. It helps out. Um, I've left it pretty low, but you can up that if you see banding in your aurora. Uh, the aurora will animate between profiles, so I'm going to switch to the stretchy profile. And now you're going to see it change to something a little more twisted and spread out. It does it over the course of 10 seconds. So now we've got a little bit longer strips. And it looks pretty pretty good. It animates seamlessly. And then, of course, if you want it to go away, just set the profile to none. And your aurora will slowly disappear. Okay. I think that's pretty much it for the Aurora Borealis and Weathermaker. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please email me at support at digitalruby.com, and I would love to help. Thanks. Bye-bye.